Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I am going through my colors here and I've got this beautiful color called Splash from Art Minds and I'm just trying to get the last bit of it out of the jar because it's so deliciously delightful. It is just a beautiful kind of sparkly emerald pearlescent color that is just really beautiful. So I'm trying to get every bit of it that I can out of this jar. I thought I had my microphone on earlier and I didn't, so I was talking away. Again, this was Art Minds. I think it came from Michael's. And I think the color name is Splash. So this is a Deco Art Extreme Sheen Antique Bronze. Artist Loft Old Gold. This is Raw Umber by Master's Touch. This is Liquitex Basics Turquoise Blue. This is my white, my, my standard Artist Loft white. And I put just a dollop of turquoise blue in it. And then I put some Raw Umber to tone it down. So it's kind of a soft, muted, almost robin's egg blue for the background and this one is my Master's Touch Warm Gray and then the last color that I just mixed here was um, this is Pearlex and the color is they write really tiny antique gold so I mixed that with some Josonia Retarder so that you could mix the powder with something liquid to get it out of the powder form and then I'll add Floetrol to it. I'm going to use Floetrol latex based one to one which is usually my typical ratio. So I've got a jug here and I'm just going to add one part Floetrol to one part paint. Doesn't matter what brand it is, whether it's tube paint or craft bottle paint. I'm just putting in the same amount of Floetrol as I do have of the, um, the paint, whatever brand it is. Now the pigment, I might do two parts Floetrol just because the pigment stretches really far. It's very gorgeous and metallic from the the powder. So I put it with the retarder first and then you just mix in your flow trawl and then it just turns into your paint mixture just like every other paint that you mix with flow trawl. And it's you know the perfect consistency. You don't have to add water so that's with powdered pigment. Um, Go ahead and mix this Art Minds up really fast. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of the mixing so you don't have to listen to me while I mix. Okay, and I'm also going to use my white in a bottle. So it's in a squeeze bottle. It's my typical white ratio, which was what was in the cup, and then I just added some turquoise and a touch of brown to knock it off, and so it's not so bright. So I'm going to put these to the side. I have a card if I need it for swiping. I have my straw, my palette knife that I love, a skewer, some damp paper towels. I'm ready to roll. I want to show you the difference. Well, this is called antique gold and a bronze. Look at the difference in the colors when a lot of a lot of brands would call this a bronze color, but they're calling it antique gold and this bronze is very pinky toned. So, it just it is a variable between different brands of companies. 
this is a little container that I'm going to do kind of like puddle pours in to put onto my canvas. So that's what that is for. You can see my dirty table. That's as far out as I can zoom from where my camera is. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out this base coat, which like I said is, um, is going to be my background. So I typically use my icing fondant plastic spreader, but those are packed away for a workshop that I'm teaching at next week. So I'm just using one of these icing spatulas, which are fine. I kind of like the plastic, little cheap plastic tool better than I do this, but um, they both work. Now because my canvas is white, I've got to uh, get this to go over the edges so that my sides will be covered as well. So I kind of need to utilize every bit of my paint that I've mixed up because it's not a standard color out of a bottle. I've mixed it myself. So, and if I don't get the sides covered, that's okay because it can go on a frame. But you don't want any of the white canvas to peek through. So I'm just making sure I have some good coverage here. Also, when you do something like this, you can paint the sides a color that is complementary with your painting if you don't have enough color for the sides. So just keep that in mind as well. Like I have enough paint, but I'm going to keep what's in my cup for the top in case I need it for touch-ups. And I'll plan on painting the sides or framing it once it's finished. And I actually want to turn my canvas long ways. So I'm going to have to move my colors out of the way. My table is stained. It's on butcher paper and it's got paint and stains and everything else because I've used it for a long time now. So I'm not worried about what gets on the table. I am worried about the coverage of this pale color though. So I do want to make sure that I've got good coverage before I start on anything. Again, this is an 18 by 24. These kind of paintings do not require as much paint because you're controlling pretty much everything that happens on your canvas. I did not add silicone or OGX. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. I didn't add silicone or OGX to the colors because I really am not looking for cells. If they happen, that's okay, but I'm not really looking for it. So I'm going to um, start with this beautiful metallic color here. And then I'm just going to kind of layer in in areas, different colors. I'm just going to use my torch and heat it just a bit. That just releases the air bubbles. I 
and so there, there's cells happening, which is fine, even though I didn't necessarily plan on wanting cells, but that's okay. And as I continue to see any low spots, I'm just going to, you know, continually add paint to make sure that we don't see the canvas below. So I love the way these interacted with each other. And I'm going to take this and prop it up against something to let all the colors pull in the corner. So it'll go down to the corner, what's left in there, and I can use that for a pretty ribbon pour where I want it lighter. I think I'm going to try going over this area with the balloon. Just to kind of get rid of that brown a little bit. And that tan. I wasn't I wasn't feeling either one of those areas, so just doing that. I'm just gonna be quiet, I'm just gonna work and you can just watch so you won't have to listen to me talk.
Looking at the camera screen, it looks more green. In real life, it's more turquoise. So, um, I love it. It's very organic, very abstract, and um, I'm really pleased with it. So, at first, you know, I had my doubts, but you just keep working on it till you manipulate it to where you're happy with it. So I'm going to bring it up to you, and it's going to dry darker. That background is going to dry darker. But it is definitely more turquoise than it is green. So hopefully I can get the colors true on the video. And this would be the way that I would orient it. And I hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I love to play with metallics and I love the turquoise with metallics. That's always a beautiful combination to me. But you really can't go wrong with any color in, in metallics, to be honest. You're always going to get something beautiful when you combine metallics with anything because they're just so fabulous. So, um, if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. If you are a subscriber, make sure to click on the bell in the bottom right to get notifications when I post new videos. If you're on your laptop, if you check out where it says show more below, or on your mobile device, it's a down arrow. That has all the links below that has my Amazon recommendations, my Facebook group, my Thinkific platform where I do online classes painting traditional acrylic paintings for beginners who want to learn how to paint with acrylics and brushes. So check out the Thinkific platform. I've got all kinds of fun classes to take there and I keep adding two more each month. And there is a PayPal link. I also accept Zelle for any donations. That would be greatly appreciated. I want to give a shout out to Jean McKinney for her support this past month. I really appreciate it. And all my patrons on Patreon, thank you so much for helping me with my art journey and helping with donations for supplies. It's greatly appreciated. I will see you on the next video. I always love to make you new videos and try to come up with cool ideas to show to you. So thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.